All right. And so um, let me see. Now we can see. Yes, I cannot. Can now. Perfect. We all muted. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Cool. So um, generally, the format uh, we're going to present. We're doing introduction. We're going to go through you know same box email hacks, text expander um, hacks, and how we kind of like work together. And then we'll do a Q and A. And then at the end, we also have a gift. So make sure you guys kind of stay. Uh, stay to the end of the webinar. There's going to be a gift that's going to be kind of released, and you guys will hopefully see a lot of value from it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the webcam so you guys can see uh, Dimitri. Oh, yeah, and then um, one second. I think we're just waiting on the Yeah, let's, 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 give, let's give it a couple of minutes, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. I want to meet for now. It's right on time, and we'll uh, it will probably take us a little uh, little while to um, kind of get going, get started with the intro. So whoever is joining us late um, won't miss too much. All right, all right, folks. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining. Um, so as as Thomas um, kind of gave a, gave a quick intro, um, we are Sandbox and Text Expander. And, and so what, what qualifies us um, to, to be talking to you, to you here today is we've spent a lot of time um, looking at kind of best practices around productivity in general and email productivity specifically. And um, so and what we'll focus on today is email hacks. Uh, and so the, the, let's actually let's just dive in right into the presentation. Um, Oh, and I think I need to share my screen. I think it's already shared. Everyone see the, Everyone see the screen? Or, or ah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. perfect. All right, and then I'll uh, focus yeah, on the screen. All right. Um, okay, so yeah, the, the title is How to Crush Email with Sandbox and Text Expander. And um, here's a little bit about us, and I'll, I'll talk and I'll, I'll let my introduce herself. So my name is Dimitri. I'm the co-founder here at Sandbox, and um, I've uh, you know what I focus on primarily is uh, growth, business development, marketing, um, and um, as part of it, uh, what we've done is we kind of looked at uh, what, we, what we realized a few years ago uh, when we started the company back in 2010 is that having the right tools is not now, uh, you also need to kind of adjust the way you think about productivity, and specifically email. Um, you need to adjust your process, your um, kind of your your you know, really the way you think about it. And so what we did is we uh, we set out to interview the best, most productive emailers out there. Uh, we looked at a ton of data um, and uh, kind of researched our internal data and did a bunch of research. And so what we uh, kind of came up with is what we'll we'll talk about today. And Maya, do you want to? Do a couple minutes. Uh, sure. So, hello. Uh, my name is Maya Olson, and I've been working with Smile Software, the creators of Text Expander, for <laughs> I don't know, many, many years now. Um, so, with Text Expander, uh, that was actually something that we found a huge need for in house. So, being able to respond to email very quickly and very accurately was very important for our support side and we were actually using another tool that was failing us and so we ended up making this one to solve our own problems um, and so with text expander uh, it's been hugely successful in being used in our company and with other companies and so I work with um, well I started in support and then I also do marketing and PR and a wide variety of other things and Cool. 
All right, so uh, yeah, as Thomas said, please stay until the end. Uh, we uh, will give out some uh, nice gifts. Uh, so yeah, don't, don't drop off on us. Uh, and also, we will follow up with the recording of the, of the webinar and uh, maybe a couple of other couple of other things. So what we'll cover from the same box side is the three uh, email commandments, which are kind of just the overarching principles that we found are really a must if you want to not be buried in your email. Um, we'll talk about the inbox zero hacks and specifically how Samebox uh, fits into that. And then lastly, we'll cover, we'll cover advanced email hacks, which are just kind of short, actionable uh, tips uh, for how to uh, beat your inbox. So let's dive in. Oh, and then, then we'll pass it off to, uh, to Maya, and we'll leave uh, with a Q&A in the end. So please, if you have any questions, type them into the questions section uh, in the app, and we'll, uh, we'll address them uh, at the end. So um, the three email commands, and again, this is kind of uh, a uh, consolidation of all, all the wisdom that we've accumulated over the last six years, uh, again, data, research, and mo most importantly, talking to thousands of, uh, thousands of uh, our customers and just productive emailers. So uh, commandment number one is email is like a game of Tetris. No matter how good you are, more emails will keep coming and faster. So the research shows that every year the number of emails we receive keeps going up. So uh, if today an average professional spends 13 hours a week dealing with their inbox, just reactively uh, dealing with their inbox, uh, as the volume of emails keeps going up, that means that over time you will spend even more time doing email. And so unless you want to spend 24 hours a day doing email in, in, in 10 years, if something has to change. You, you're, not, you're not going to beat the game at its own rules. So you have to change the rules of the game. That means uh, you have to change the, your system, you need to change your process, and you need the right tools uh, to win. Uh, commandment number two, and this is probably uh, the, the biggest, if you take away anything out of, out of today, it should be this. Uh, so email has become our kind of default number one priority. You wake up, whether you look at your phone and you know get buried in email. You get to the office, you open up your uh, you know, your laptop and start typing away, responding to people's emails, and next thing you know, it's lunchtime. And the problem, the real problem with this is that email is a to-do list that other people write on for you. So if you know, doing email is your number one priority, that means other people's priorities are your number one priority. And the solution to this is uh, is simple but not easy, uh, and it's we call it scan and block ask. So, scan your email for important and urgent items you know, first thing in the morning, and this can be when you wake up right? if you, you know if you can't if you can't help it. Uh, it can be when you first get to the office, um, but then as soon as you make sure there are no fires to put out, close your inbox, and you can do so comfortably because. Uh, you also need to block um, slots in your calendar for what we call email time. So I have a, an appointment every day at 11 o'clock uh, for half an hour called email time. And so this is the time where I go back into my inbox and actually look at the things that are not so urgent and important and, and figure out what to do with them. And then lastly, if you ever get stuck, uh, quote unquote, doing email, ask yourself if this is the best use of your time right this, this second. Uh, most of the time, like 95% of the time, the answer is probably going to be no. There's probably something more important. Uh, eventually, you do need to get to your inbox, so eventually it will be your number one, number one priority, but it needs to be on your own terms. Comment number three, not all emails are created equal. Uh, the problem is that every single email interface, whether it is a desktop or mobile client or webmail, uh, every email has the same amount of real estate on the screen as, as every other email. So subconsciously for our brain, it's very hard to differentiate between an important email from, a, from an important customer or a newsletter. Right? They look, literally look the same. It's a sender and subject. Right? And so um, the, the solution to this is really the simple realization that there are really three kinds of emails. There are unimportant emails, and these are the ones you need to delete or archive in bulk. And, and bulk is key, and we'll talk about that uh, later. In a couple of slides. Uh, there is the important and urgent bucket, which we kind of already talked about. These are the emails you need to deal with right now or you know, the world is going to end. Um, luckily, by the way, that's a pretty small bucket. Right? For most people, it's really, really small. And then lastly, there is the important, not urgent bucket. And this is 
this is a big bucket, um, and this is stuff that needs to be processed later, and you need to decide when that later is. So, and now we kind of get into the, the meat of, of this, um, what we just talked about. So, inbox zero is, is, is become a popular term, um, and I think most people um, misuse it. Uh, it sounds, uh, inbox zero sounds like the, the act of having zero emails in your inbox, uh, but that's actually not true. Inbox zero set of processes um, that you need to follow consistently in order to get zero emails in your inbox all the time, like every day. Uh, and it, uh, inbox zero is really uh, kind of rooted in the, the old concept of triage. And uh, triage is a, is a medical term, uh, and it was developed uh, during the Napoleonic Wars by uh, one of Napoleon's uh, head surgeons. Uh, and so what he did is he came up with a process for treating um, patients uh, or bucketing patients into three buckets depending on the severity of their condition, uh, of their injury. Uh, so there are, there are patients, and when I say patients, think emails, right? Uh, patients who are uh, likely to die regardless of what, what you do. Um, there are patients who are likely to live regardless of what you do. And then there are patients for whom like, a, a, a real effort is going to make a huge difference. And so what, what you did is for patients who are, you know, well, let's, let's start with that. I realize they're not ordered in the best possible way. So the, the second bullet, patients who are likely to die regardless of what happens, what, what they did in um, Napoleon's wars is, uh, in Napoleon's army, is they put them in a separate, uh, separate tent, they gave them morphine, made sure they're comfortable, and, you know, kind of let them die in peace. Uh, the patients who are like, most likely to live, maybe it's just a small wound, um, they, you know, stitched them up really quick and, and set them off. And so th what that did is that allowed the, the doctors you know, to, to spend a bulk of their time um, you know, focusing on patients who really need their help for whom like, it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a matter of life and death. And by the way, a quick historical fact, uh, everybody in Napoleon's army was treated this way, including Napoleon soldiers, Napoleon's generals, or um, uh, captured enemy soldiers. Uh, everybody was kind of following the same process. So how does this apply to email? Uh, same thing. The, uh, triage is basically the same, and uh, yeah, the same method is used in hospitals today, and we're also use it for email or really productivity in general. Um, so there are three buckets. Uh, there are this noise emails, meaning they should die. Uh, um, there are the quick fix emails, which is something you should do right now under two minutes, and then there is uh, emails that need real work, like the actual work needs to get done. And so what does it actually mean? So for the noise, uh, it's noise means they should be deleted or archived in bulk. And if you recall a couple of slides ago, we talked about that, that that's the, the unimportant bucket, right? So don't, if, you can ID, if you can scan the subject and sender and determine it's not an important email, just delete it. You don't need to open it. Um, the quick fix bucket, uh, there are really three actions you can take. Uh, you can defer, which is snooze an email. You can delegate, which, which is forward. And you can respond, which is just hit reply and do it right now. And the key here is, you know, if it's a quick, if it's under two minutes, do it right now. And then the last bucket, the stuff that needs work, um, is the, you know, the do, um, kind of the do bucket of emails. And this is, you know, emails that require some thinking and processing. So um, let, let's, let's talk about really quick how this works with Sandbox. Uh, so we built, and I'll just give a quick intro. Uh, so we built a company, we started the company uh, six years ago. Um, and the solution that we were, uh, or the problem we were looking to solve is just the volume of emails keeps increasing. And the, uh, the signal to noise ratio in an average inbox is getting worse. Meaning an average person keeps getting more and more unimportant emails while the important ones, uh, you know, proportionally is getting uh, or less and less of. And so the solution that we came up with is very simple, um, and this is actually that first um, mouse is not, not working today. Um, under delete archive, uh, that first thing is called same later. And so that's the first feature that we build and still our most popular one. And the way it works is really simple. When you, when you first sign up for Samebox, uh, what we'll do is we'll analyze how you interact with your inbox and um, figure out what's important to you. So we look at what, you know, things like what emails do you open, what emails do you respond to, how quickly you open them, how quickly you respond, how often, how far back, and so on and so on. So based on this, we know what's important to you personally. We take all of the unimportant stuff and we move it to this folder called later. And it means the important things stay in your inbox, all the unimportant things are moved out into this 
an important folder. And so what, what I personally do and what we recommend is, um, you know, I, it's important to go through this folder um, once a day, sometimes more often, sometimes less often, and uh, just kind of quickly scan through it. And sometimes, you know, sometimes there will be an important email that's kind of stuck, stuck here. It could be a newsletter you you know, actually do care about reading or the you know, subject is interesting, right? Like I, I like Tim Ferriss and I probably want to see what his newest obsession is. So what I can do is I can uh, move it to my inbox and that would train uh, Sanebox to uh, put emails like this into your inbox in the future. And by the way, uh, yeah, pretty important. Um, we work with any email provider, any client, any device. Um, all of our features are basically folders that live anywhere you do your email. So it works on your phone, it works on Outlook, it works on Gmail, any, any email setup you can think of, we automatically work with it because we just work uh, natively. We don't actually have like an app or a UI of our own. Um, and so, yeah, so once you kind of move an email, uh, move emails around, you can select all and hit delete. And so you essentially just processed all of those unimportant emails with two clicks. So select all and delete. Then, if um, let's talk about this same black hole uh, thing for a second. If you really never want to hear from a sender again, um, like yeah, this guy, probably don't really care about. I'm going to move into my move in, uh, move him into my same black hole folder. And so what happens is that essentially trains that email to trash. So all future emails from that sender will go straight to trash. So it's like unsubscribing, but just much easier, safer, because you're not exposing yourself as a, you know, as a real person, um, and faster, so you're just wondering. And then you can also customize, um, if once you sign up for Sandbox, you can create kind of custom filters, um, and there's many different, di different ways you could, you could do it. So um, now we've dealt with the unimportant emails, uh, again, with, with a couple of clicks. So that now we can go into my, my inbox and look at things that, um, you know, that are actually important. So um, this is an email that's important, but just not urgent right now. So I'm going to move it to a folder called tomorrow, and it's going to pop back in my inbox tomorrow morning. If I move this email, well, this webinar is starting now, but let's say it's starting next week. I'm going to move it to a folder called next week, and it's going to pop back in my inbox on Monday morning. And uh, you can also customize it. So you can, I created one for three days. I created one for two weeks. And so essentially, you just move emails out, and then they um, magically pop back in your inbox when you're ready. Um, for uh, forwarding emails or replying to emails, we have a really, probably our second most popular feature. It's called Same Reminders. The way it works is it's, uh, you send the email as you normally would. Um, My, my dentist wants to uh, make an appointment. Um, so let's say you send an email. I'm going to send an email to Thomas, and I want to make sure he gets back to me on time. Uh, so what I can do is I can CC or I can BCC um, tomorrow at sandbox.com, or I could do uh, Saturday 8 a.m. at sandbox.com, or any, you know, I could put December 3rd. 9 a.m. at Sandbox.com. Uh, you get the idea. Basically, anything you can think of. And so what will happen is we'll track whether or not uh, Thomas replies to me by the time you specify. Um, and if he doesn't, uh, I'll get a reminder to follow up. So it's like a super lightweight CRM um, right in your uh, right in your inbox. Uh, by the way, it's also a great way to snooze emails. So you, let's say uh, I don't want to deal with my dentist. Uh, until later today, so I'm going to forward it to 1 p.m. at sandbox.com, and this email is going to pop back in my inbox at 1 p.m. Pretty, pretty useful. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, the, the, this again, this works anywhere you do your email, so you can just CC an address on your phone, um, and it will set up that kind of tracking uh, reminder. It's also, by the way, uh, it's a really, really powerful feature. It's also a good way to send yourself um, a reminder. And send a reminder to your future self. So you can uh, CC, or sorry, you can send an email to, let's say, every um, Friday at 3 p.m. Um, so I, I, I like to kind of send myself quickly, weekly reminders. So I could do uh, you know, blah, blah. 
And so now every Friday at 3 p.m., I'm going to get an email that says blah, blah. Um, super useful. So um, the, if you do these three things, uh, the only emails left in your inbox are the ones that you will you will deal with today. Now, if you're not going to deal with them today, you should snooze them for tomorrow. Uh, another way of doing this, which is a really useful uh, useful hack, is uh, star. If you use Gmail, uh, starring emails that are um, urgent, uh, or sorry, that are important and you need to deal with today, uh, will allow you to work out of your uh, star start folder instead of your inbox, which is uh, and then at the end of the day, um, once you're done with everything, um, or, sorry, whatever you're not done with, as I already said, uh, just move it until tomorrow. Drag it into the tomorrow folder, and you f you finish your day with inbox zero. Now all those emails are going to pop back in your inbox in the morning, but it's a really nice productivity hack. And actually, it's great for your uh, psychological uh, well-being to end your day with inbox zero. So that's something I like to do as well. So that, that's a quick sandbox overview. We do a lot of other stuff as well, but these are kind of the more um, the more popular features. Um, yeah, we can you know, we can also move your attachments to cloud storage automatically. Um, we can kind of give you a list of all of the emails that you sent that haven't received a reply. Um, you can customize your inbox really any number of ways. So now um, let's talk quickly about just other uh, useful e what we call advanced email hacks. So these are just uh, short, actionable uh, kind of tricks that you can uh, start using now. Um, the first one, and this is my personal favorite, uh, bolding key phrases. So if your email is longer, so like you know, a paragraph or even a, you know, just you know, got a few sentences, um, highlight the key uh, keywords or the key kind of action item in bold. Um, don't do all caps, but if you bold something, uh, it just it calls out the uh, calls out the recipient's attention really well. Um, commandment number, or sorry, oof, hack number two. Uh, don't get hacked, and this is not really an email productivity hack, but we, we all feel really, and I know Maya, you, you're, I think you're in the same same camp. Um, it's really, really, really important uh, to to have a, a safe password. So we at Sandbox, uh, all of us here use one password, which we really like. Uh, LastPass is another option. Uh, and what those services do is they create a, a impossible, like really long, random, uh, impossible to guess uh, password and store it locally on your um, on your computer. And you can also sync with sync it with Dropbox or with your uh, kind of as a team account as well. Um, and and then, so really what that leaves you with is, is coming up with a password for your one password. Um, and I also have a, a kind of a memorized password for my email and for some other key accounts that I, you know, I really want to always have in my head. And um, the, the hack to remember uh, those passwords is this. So think of a song or a phrase or a, a, you know, some sentence that you know by heart. And um, as you are saying it to yourself, start start typing the first letter of each word. So in this case, Billy Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl that claims that I'm the one. Becomes this thing that you see um, in, in bold at the bottom, right? And you get extra credit for uh, turning things like one into a number one, right? Because that makes it even even harder. Um, and if you add a you know, capitalized uh, or lowercase here and there, that's great too. So. Really easy to remember. In fact, you don't need to remember it. You always, you already, you already remember the password. Uh, but it's really hard to guess. Um, this is a simple one, and, but a lot of people forget this. Um, if you're sending an important email, don't fill out the recipient's address until you really are uh, are done proofreading. Um, if you use Gmail, there's an amazing feature called Undo Send. Um, I think it's not even in lab. I think it's now a part of the oh, the Gmail settings. It used to be a labs feature, but now it's uh, I think it's part of the uh, the product. Uh, it's really awesome. Basically, you send the email and you still have like up to thirty seconds to hit undo, um, and, and that's something I end up using at least once a week. It's really, really cool. Um, this is a big one as well. Um, don't use your inbox as an archive, uh, and this is the number one kind of faux pas that we see among um, among. Yeah, people, almost everybody. Um, the the problem is that if people treat their inbox as an archive, which means uh, you know you're done with the email, you just kind of leave it in your inbox. And this is the equivalent of uh, taking envelopes out of your physical snail mail mailbox 
reading the, those envelopes and then stuffing them back in, right? That's, it sounds ridiculous, but that's basically what you're doing when you're leaving emails in your inbox. Inbox is meant to be the same thing that your snail ball, snail mail inbox is. It's stuff for unprocessed emails that, that you haven't, like, haven't processed yet, right? <laughs> <laughs> haven't dealt with it yet, and so uh, it, it's really important to not do it. In, in fact, if you're, you know, uh, what I would recommend, just if you, if you do this, if you're guilty, um, create a folder, call it archive, and just move every all the stuff in your inbox, move it into that folder. Uh, everything will still be there. Everything is on your server. Nothing is going to disappear. But you should really keep your inbox clean. Um, subject um, using the subject wisely is really important in a world where. Um, it, the subject may be the only thing people read nowadays, right? Because everyone is over, overloaded. Uh, so putting tags into it, um, you know. So well, first of all, making it specific, putting a call to action is, is super helpful. So you know, five things I need you to do tomorrow is much better than just saying things, right? And then putting tags is really really helpful. So putting time sensitive, or actually put a deadline uh, you know, by tomorrow, right? Um, into the uh, into the subject is really helpful. Um, there are some acronyms that are really useful. So NMTR means no need to reply. Uh, same as NRN. NRN means no reply necessary. And that just means that the recipient can um, open the email and they know that there's no action required for them. So it's it's just it's almost like adding time back into their day because they yeah, they don't need to be afraid to open this email. If you can put the message, the entire message in the subject, um, like a tweet. Uh, you know, put it in the subject and put EOM at the end, end of message. Um, then the recipient also knows they don't need to click. Uh, everything's right there. And then uh, my favorite is uh, putting not urgent um, in the subject. That basically also is like adding time back in your day because you know there's uh, there's no pressure. You can do it at your at your leisure. Just remove some stress. Um, do not unsubscribe from suspicious emails. We see, we hear this. All the time. Um, so our our customers, or um, actually, what happens is a lot of our new customers uh, come to us because they've gone through the process of unsubscribing from um, you know, just going on an unsubscribe binge and unsubscribing from a bunch of uh, newsletters, mailing lists, and they find themselves being sent out for more mailing lists at the end. And so what happens is when you're unsubscribing from a uh, a sender who is who, you know, whose integrity is not super high. Um, they're, they might end up selling you to more mailing lists. Because what you're doing is you're essentially saying, hey, I, I'm a real person, number one. And number two, I'm a person who cares about their inbox. So you are a spammy marketer's dream come true. So you know, it, it's OK to unsubscribe from legitimate services, but it, be careful. And so that's actually why we built the same black hole feature. Um, it's just a much faster, easier, and safer uh, way of unsubscribing. Um, you're not exposing yourself as anything, and you just never hear from the person again. So, super useful. Avoid open-ended questions. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, email is a great medium for closed-ended questions like, um, you know, should we do A, B, or C? Um, it's a terrible medium for open-ended questions. So if you're ending your email with you know, thoughts, question mark, uh, it's probably a sign that there should be a phone call. Right? And if you end your email with, hey, should we do X, Y, or Z, that, that's perfect. That, that makes it very easy. Um, so this last one is not really a hack, but more of an observation. And it's a, it's a fitting, uh, fitting final uh, thought for, for our section before we pass it off to Maya. Um, busiest people are always very responsive. Uh, so we're lucky. Um, our early customers um, from the beginning were um, very, very kind of public really busy uh, emailers, so it's your CEOs, venture capitalists, reporters, who get thousands, like over a thousand, sometimes thousands of emails per day. And this is like, this is not spam. This is legitimate emails. And, and those people will be noticed is they are also, not only do they get to inbox zero every day, but they're the most responsive. Some of those, like some of the, the pretty well-known venture capitalists, um, they respond to every email. And it's, it's crazy. Like we try to figure out what this is, or how they are able to do this. And what we found is they, you know, they think about email differently. They, uh, they have a system. They have to use the right tools. They have the right process. And more importantly, they think about email in a different way from, from most of us. And so what we try to do here 
is kind of share some of their wisdom um, and, um, and and you know, experience and, and learnings and, and hacks. So if you use those um, and you don't get a thousand emails per day, you definitely will get to inbox zero because it is definitely possible. Uh, and there are people out there who do it every single day. Um, so with that, it's uh, Maya's turn. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Dimitri. Um, those are some great tips. Uh, I appreciate your note about the subject line. I definitely appreciate it when subject lines apply to me and them. Um. Maya, can you um, switch to your screen? Oh, okay. Okay. Great. So you can see my slides. Awesome. So, Dimitri, thank you um, for letting us know how to get down to zero inbox. Um, now I'd like to talk about how you can actually respond as quickly as possible to the emails that you do have to reply to. And so first I'd actually need to cover what Text Expander is for you to understand how it can really help you to gather the various replies that you've already sent in your email and then repurpose them as quickly and efficiently as possible. So what is Text Expander? Well, it's a tool that lets you take chunks of text that you've written and then you put them into Text Expander. You can assign them a much shorter to type abbreviation. So that way, as you're typing your emails, you type the abbreviation. As Text Expander watches you type that, it replaces what you just typed with a longer chunk of text. So let's take a look at what that means. So here I have just a open text window and a very basic snippet that I use a surprising amount is my email address. So M song. So the combination of the abbreviation I just typed and this that just expanded is what we call a snippet. And so you'll notice that I put M because that's how I start all of the snippets that are all my various email addresses. And then I have this ending that's actually like an in company moniker for the name of our company. So that way I can always remember what this snippet is for. And so if we take that a little bit farther, I've also set up a snippet that is the email domain for my company, which means that when I'm sending an email, if I'm not in an app that actually has autofill, then I can quickly type in a series of names by just using someone's first name and filling in my company's names. Now, if we take a look at the Text Expander app, we can see how that's set up. So here I have the Text Expander window open. Um, on the left, we have a list of all of my <laughs> <clears throat> many, many snippets that I've gathered over the years. And then to the right, we have this nice big uh, e content window. You can see that I have the piece of the snippet that showed up. And down below, at the very bottom of the screen, I have the abbreviation that I typed instead. Um, and just above is a label field. I would advise you to use that it's a descriptive area so if you have a lot of emails and particularly if they're longer snippets you may not understand the purpose of them just at a glance especially if you're say sharing this group with other people for example we have our whole support team sharing several groups of snippets so being able to say what the snippet is for and having some extra search keywords in there is very handy because once you get lot of snippets, you'll want to be able to search on them very quickly to find what you need. 
So the important parts of a snippet are the thing that you expand, the thing that you type, and an optional label. And the things you can expand are text, you can do images, think of sentences, paragraphs, you can even do scripts. And I hope you can see based on being able to expand things very quickly that you can definitely scale this up so that way whenever you have an email you need to reply to you can just type a couple of characters and your email is done. So the goal is actually to put more emails in that two minute quick fix category that uh, Dimitri was talking about because well then you don't have to defer till later and still spend more time on it. So how would you come up with the things to make into snippets, well, you would want to look through all of your old emails. Uh, somewhere you have the best wording for a reply. Um, for myself, I noticed that a lot of my emails that I reply to are just variations on a theme, and my goal is to look through the emails that I responded to basically the same and take the best worded one and use that as the reply that I send to everyone. So that way it's a reply that I know I spent time thinking about, so it's well crafted, I, it's grammatically correct, all the spelling errors are fixed, and then I can just send that out very quickly. Um, so you probably want to think about the abbreviations you use. So for each group of snippets, I like to organize them sort of by content. So like my marketing snippets are over here, my support snippets are over here, and they have similar um, abbreviations. So for all the support snippets, I start with like SUP because that reminds me what they're for. And it also helps me search on them later. So the alternate to actually expanding uh, snippets in your emails is that you may not remember what it is that you need to, how you need to respond. So sometimes a question is very long and complicated and you may not remember all the details you actually need to send that person. And so this can save you time from having to search back through your inbox to figure out what it is you said last time. You're just going to have that ready to go. So to further break down the sort of things that you can make into snippets, um, think about it in terms of categories of small, medium, and large. So for a small snippet, that's like what I showed you a little earlier. So like an email address or a URL actually is another good one. So let me clear out the screen. So I frequently have to send people links for more information to our website, various places in our website. So I actually like to start all of those with a slash. So slash, and here I have the wiki is our address for Wikipedia. And so you'll notice that it, because it starts with slash, it's just another way to help remind me of exactly what this snippet is for. Um, I also have my mailing address. I have pieces of my mailing addresses snippets, which is really handy when I'm filling out the online shopping section. Um, <laughs> it doesn't really apply to email, but it's very handy to be able to shop quickly online. Don't make your credit card a snippet though. I would not suggest that. Uh, actually, Dimitri mentioned 1Password. That's a great place to put highly secure information. This is where you want to put stuff that you actually just have to type very rapidly. And um, I would also suggest you add uh, autocorrection. So I know if you type in Word all day, you might be in Word and using their autocorrect, but uh, Text Expander will actually expand in all of the apps that you're typing in, so you can actually carry that autocorrect with you. So if we go back to the Text Expander window, if you click the little plus down here, 
a series of predefined groups, which means they're already made for you. So there are several autocorrect groups. So the Tidbits group, our friends over at Tidbits, made a group of 2,500 of the like most commonly misspelled words. So those will just expand as you type. You don't even have to think about it. Um, I highly suggest that you start uh, your own group of personal typing autocorrections. So for some reason, I just have trouble typing out the word the. <laughs> it just always gets garbled with other words that I have around it. And so I actually have my own group of snippets to correct that typing mistake that it's just my fingers don't like the word the. And text spinner helps me with that. Um, so those are some small snippets. So if you think about some sort of medium-sized snippets that you can call from your email, that would be like a paragraph of information. So maybe some directions that you have, or maybe a longer chunk of information that you want to send to people that includes some links to more information. Um, also an email signature. So I actually have several email signatures. I actually start all of them with SIG. And remember that it's a signature. And then this would be my PR signature. I also have one for support and for a couple of other, uh, other topics. And so it's very easy to know who I am being that day <laughs> when I'm answering my email. Um, so if you take a look at this email, actually you'll notice that there are some active links. So you can create active links in your snippet. Um, so let's take a look at a snippet signature. Here is a lovely, colorful snippet signature. Um, so the previous snippets that I'd expanded were set to plain text. What plain text means is, say, you're answering an email and it's all in Comic Sans font. Um, when you expand snippets, you want them to blend in and also be Comic Sans. Anything in plain text will completely blend in with that. With formatted text, that means that you can have things like links and pictures and colors, but it will keep that formatting when you expand. So here we have a nice colorful signature. You'll see that up here in the editing bar, you have some options for editing the text. Um, so if I were to make a link, I could actually just double click and select this word. And here we have a little button for making a hyperlink. And then you just put in the destination URL that you wanted that word to have. So now in terms of a very longer snippet that you might use, uh, think of form letters or something that's a boilerplate. Um, <clears throat> one of the most interesting examples I've seen is actually photographers. I wouldn't normally think of a photographer as someone who does a lot of typing, but actually they email their clients all the time. So they actually have to take each individual client through the exact same process of introducing themselves. So say the first email might be, uh, here is a link to my portfolio, here's my pricing page, and then a bunch of information about you know, trying to get the person to hire them. And then the next email would be, here's how we can set up the date and time, and here's some tips on looking your best. And so there's actually a long series of things where everything in the email is basically the same, except for a couple of very small spots. Um, so now you're probably thinking, well, I have a giant chunk of static text. How can I customize it? Well, with Text Expander, you can actually make fill in the blank areas. So let's take a look at one of those snippets. So I have my sales follow-up. And you'll notice that instead of just outright expanding completely, we have this little temporary pop-up window. And so that means that we can look at what is about to expand and then fill in a couple of these little areas. So here we have a field that I've chosen to name F name. Um, so if you're very familiar with this, you might tab through very quickly. It's very handy to have these reminders of what you are supposed to type in this field. Um, and in terms of answering email, especially if it's a person you have not interacted with, 
I suggest that you copy and paste their first name. So I'm going to command C to copy this name and then just paste it in the snippet fields with command V. Um, it's very polite to spell people's names when you're talking to them to spell them correctly. So now that we've done that, I can actually hit the tab key and I get to the next field where I'm actually setting up a meeting. And so I've actually set up this little pop up here with all the days of the week. So I can do return and then tab. And so I have my date field. Now you can actually expand snippets inside of these snippets. So I've set up a date for two days in the future. So that means that uh, with text expander, you can also set up the current date or time, future, past, and so I actually have a whole group of snippets that are different days, so I can quickly just expand them. I don't have to go to my calendar and think about it. And so if I tab again, um, these are actually the standard times that I like to meet, so I have that in there, so I can click return. Um, if I didn't want a standard time, I could actually write in an alternate time, hence the name of the field, alt time. Um, if I don't put anything in here, the field will actually just completely disappear from the expanded snippet, so I don't have to worry about it. I have my name. So here's a section where maybe I want to send them a preview. And so I can put in a promo code for them. Um, while I did that, I'd like to point out that there's this second field that filled out at the exact same time. So that can be very handy if you need information to show up in a couple of different spots. So if I'll just clear this out, you'll know that it says code in each because this is where I would paste their name code. Um, because they have the same name, that means they're filled out with the same information at the same time, which is super handy. So we're expanding this in our text field, then we click OK. And our whole nice, long, perfectly customized snippet is waiting for us. So you can also expand a snippet and have it um, pull from other snippets. So if we take a look at our snippets, so notice that down here at the bottom, you'll recognize that this code section is here. And then there's this other little snippet. So this is actually just the name of another snippet. So I have a separate snippet that is my usual email signature. And so I can actually just have that inserted in a bunch of different snippets. And that way, if I update my email signature, I don't then have you know five different snippets to go and have to remember to update. I update one. And then whenever I expand this larger snippet, um, the other snippet just gets pulled along. And so uh, this is what the content of that snippet looks like. So if we notice there's little percent signs, and so if I click on it, this is how we set up the pop-up menu. So we have the various days of the week, and you could add another field. Say you wanted to add Saturday, and you could click OK. And if you wanted to add a new field, you would actually come up here to the editing bar and click on fill-ins. And so single line is what you were seeing with like the first name. And then we looked at pop-up menu. So if you needed a larger chunk of text, you could do multi-line and then optional section. It means if you have some text that occasionally shows up, you just type it out and then it doesn't have to show up or it can. Um, it depends on how you feel at the time you expand the snippet. Um, so as you notice, we did search for this one. That is very handy. You can actually set up a hotkey to search for snippets very quickly. Um, you do that in preferences, hotkeys. Um, I recommend the inline search, which is very handy. So if I just press that hotkey, command slash, then I get this search bar right away and I can start typing anything I remember. Remember, it's either the abbreviation content or the label and all of the options will show up and then I can arrow through to the snippet that I want and press return or actually press um, the hotkey to expand. Mm -hmm. 
So there are several other hotkeys. Um, I highly recommend the search hotkey. Uh, you can also set up hotkeys to create uh, new snippets, which will help you very rapidly add to your snippet library. And so with Text Expander uh, is an app that you can have on your Mac, um, your Windows PC, which is the beta version, but that we're working to launch as soon as we can, and also on iPhone and iPad. So wherever it is that you're answering your email, uh, Text Expander will make sure that your snippets are there and up to date, and that's in turn very handy if you have a team like I have the support team and they'll share the same uh, snippets for answering our customers and whenever one snippet is updated all of the other snippets are updated instantly so that really keeps us able to have the best answer and also sort of continually providing the updated best answers whenever possible. Alright so that is my piece. Uh, Dimitri uh, Let's hand it back to you so we can Sounds get on good. with the Q&A. Um, perfect, yeah. And so uh, Thomas wanted to highlight some of his um, his favorite questions. Yeah, I'll highlight. Right, so. yeah, I just want to enable this really quickly. Uh... And by the way, uh, Mai, so I, I went through the, Q the questions that, that folks have asked, and I've... Um, I've addressed pretty much, or well, still going through, but I've addressed most of the uh, the sandbox ones. Um, if you if you have a couple of minutes, maybe you want to go through and see if there are any any questions you want to address, um, you know, in, in writing, or um, we could you know or we could do it by voice as well. All right. Oh, okay. Perfect. Everyone can see us. Cool. So, hi, my name is Thomas. Uh, I work with Dimitri here at Sandbox. You know, my role here is pretty much operations and business development. So, part of that is, you know, a lot of my work is, you know, sending a lot of emails, following up with a lot of people. Um, and as you know, people aren't really the best with uh, replying back to your emails. So, uh, one of the best kind of like follow-up techniques that uh, that I use personally is I use a combination of same reminders, and also I use text expanders. So. Uh, Dimitri brought earlier mentioned about you know same reminders what we do it's basically you know it's a great follow up process it's a it's very um, it's a very proactive it's actually reactive because you're you're getting the email so you're not actually proactively following up with emails that you do send and that's the biggest thing um, and with same reminders and text expander I actually have like a ninety plus reply reply rate percentage so it's actually pretty high. Um, so a couple of things I do is um, when I get the same reminder back, um, I'll quickly follow up with the email. I'll put semicolon, uh, FUP, abbreviation for follow-up, and I'll put FUP1. And that's typically the first follow-up. Um, and then if, they, if I send out another reminder and they don't reply in a couple days, whether it be two-day or three-day, depending on the urgency, I'll go semicolon, FUP2. Um, the reason why I have semicolon is you kind of want to create a system where you don't accidentally send... Um, uh, you know, accidental text expanders. You know, uh, funny story. One time, I was typing pretty quickly, um, and I sent a text expander that was supposed to go to my girlfriend. That went to Dimitri, and that's kind of embarrassing. So, uh, <laughs> it wasn't bad. Yeah, <laughs> pretty funny. But yeah, so the, basically, it's uh, it, it, it's that having a system. I put the semicolon there, so it's pretty it's a pretty effective use of uh, doing that. Another thing too is, uh, and this is just my hack. When I reply to emails and I don't see if I don't hear a reply. I'll change the subject line from whatever it was to email buried. And a lot of times people click on email buried very often just because they had, had that sense of, um, oh, you know, I might have missed something or there's something important in this email. So a lot of times I use that little hack to kind of really um, push my email through and get a reply on that. So, so again, that kind of attributes uh, same reminders, text expander, um, that attributes to my 90% reply rate percentage. Some other use cases that we do use text expander for are different funnels that we do have. Uh, one of the very common ones is obviously uh, everyone has booking call, booking calls. Uh, we use a tool called Calendly. So I put semicolon C-A-L, an abbreviation short for calendar, and it pops out the Calendly link, and people just book through that. Very seamless, very, uh, very, very easy to use. 
Um, other times, you know, a lot of times I'm communicating with customers and they have, you know, positive things to say and, you know, if they want us to give us a testimonial, so I'll go semicolon TP and that's our, um, that's where we put in all of our reviews to Trustpilot. Um, and there's other things such as, you know, following up with past due payments, you know, doing LinkedIn outreaches, um, pretty much any type of, depending on what type of funnel you do have, um, you know, Text Expander does have a great process uh, in place, kind of like how Bio outlined earlier. So that's kind of pretty much in a nutshell um, of how I personally use Text Expander with St. Box. Free gift. Cool. So for the free gift, um, it's, it's basically a uh, we're giving away an Amazon ebook bestseller that uh, Dimitri here wrote. Um, it actually, yeah, there's a couple of views on Amazon. It, it does really well. It's simply just uh, click on that daily link, or uh, we're actually going to send a follow-up email, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, we're also giving everyone who attended today a $20 credit um, if they choose to sign up for SaneBox. The credit will be automatically applied to your account um, if you sign up through that link. If you already did sign up for SaneBox and you still want the credit anyway, just shoot us a, shoot me a private email and then I'll, um, I'll add it to your guys' account. And then also, too, Maya was uh, gracious enough to give us a three-month uh, credit for Text Expander. And again, it works on Mac, iOS, and Windows. So again, we'll send a follow-up email with all these links in here, as well as a recording of the webinar, so um, you guys can watch it again, and also you guys can share the links if you guys want to. Cool. And uh, so, I, yeah, I wanted to address just a couple of the questions that, that uh, well, th there's a lot of good, great questions that came up, but some of them were, um, I think, came up a few times, so it probably makes sense to address them uh, for everybody. Um, so, does where does Sandbox work? Is it an app? Does it work on uh, OS X, iOS, etc. It's not an app. It's a cloud service that works literally anywhere. All you have to do is go to sandbox.com, uh, enter your email, and sign up. And we will connect to your uh, email account, and we'll create that same later folder on your mail server. And so, by by design, anywhere you do your email, whether it's on your native iOS app, on Apple Mail, and Gmail, on some client that's not even on a new phone that hasn't been invented yet that's coming out next year, and a new email client that hasn't hasn't been invented yet that's also coming out next year will automatically work there as well. So if you know how to use email folders, you know how to use Samebox, and if you know how to CC or BCC, um, you know how to use Same Reminders. So it's su super straightforward. Um, yeah, as far as the um, pricing, uh, so our service it starts at fifty nine a year. Um, it's fifty nine ninety nine two ninety nine. And uh, most people uh, choose the $99 plan, um, which has most of our features and uh, pretty much everything you'll need. And the, the, the most expensive plan is really everything unlimited. Um, but, you know, few people uh, pick that. So with $99 a year, it should be, it should be fine. And also our, our average uh, customer saves, I think it's, uh, the math we did is about 12 hours a month um, in kind of processing their uh, unimportant email. So it, it really pays for itself uh, very, very quickly. Um, Maya, were there any questions that you wanted to address? Um, yeah, a couple interesting things came up. So first of all is how TextSpanner works on the iPhone. So that is also an app. Um, the app itself is free. Uh, you get the TextSpanner service, so then you would just log in with your account. And then you'd be able to expand snippets in that app, and there's actually a list of apps that we have on our website that have fully integrated text expander support so you can expand your snippets in those apps. Uh, we also have a text expander keyboard so if you bring up that keyboard then you'll be able to expand snippets using that keyboard in any of the apps that you type in on iOS. iOS is a bit more locked down than Mac which is why we uh, offer the keyboard for you to be able to type anywhere. Um, Text Expander actually takes care of all of the syncing for you. So I got some sync questions. So uh, all of the apps will update themselves. Uh, we handle that on our side. Uh, you can even look at your snippets on textextander.com. That's actually where all of the share settings are. So you would log in there. It's where you handle your billing. You can actually edit and create snippets and share snippets there. Um, and I got a question about abbreviations. So yes, um, abbreviations. Um, you probably want to think of things that you are not going to accidentally type so they're not parts of other words. 
So starting with a semicolon or a double comma, a lot of people have different methods on ways to prefix their abbreviation so that way they won't accidentally pop up while they're typing. Um, so I like that and also like double letters. So if you say only have one email address, you can do like e email as the abbreviation. Um, do, uh, do you mind if we, um, if I do a couple? <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. Okay, we, we can maybe switch. Uh, yeah, oh, so, so many great questions, thank you. By the way, um, yeah, we were, I think we booked originally an hour and a half. We, we, we're not going to need that much time, but um, we're, it's now been an hour, so folks, if you need to drop off, uh, we'll miss you. Um, we do have a lot of great questions to address, so um, we'll put on it stop babbling and start answering them. So um, how do I remove the same later label? Does Google automatically move that email to the archive folder? Um, or do I need to manually move it myself? This is a great question that came up a couple times. Um, so the way um, in Gmail, there's an all mail folder. And all mail basically contains um, all mail. And the way you move, and it's, it's essentially the archive folder. And the way you move an email there is by removing a label. So if you go through a same later folder and you want to archive those emails, just remove the same later label. It's the uh, and if you use shortcuts in Gmail, it's Y. Um, if you want to delete, which I personally do because I, I don't want to keep all the unimportant stuff, uh, and I'm already coming up on my uh, Gmail uh, storage limit, um, you can just select all and hit delete, um, and there's a there's a button for delete, and it's the um, Shift three, so it's the, the um, the shift three shortcut. Um, do you advise, uh, yeah, by the way, folks, if that wasn't, uh, actually Chase, I think you asked the question, so if, if that wasn't clear, please uh, clarify. Um, do you advise scanning your simulator folder in the morning as well, or only the inbox? Uh, so I personally scan my inbox like first thing in the, like when I first wake up and I look at my phone, I only look at the inbox. Then when I, um, I go through my simulator folder during my email time, uh, time. So I love every day. And sometimes it's more often, sometimes it's less often. Um, there's a question from Maximilian. Um, for iCloud accounts for Samebox, do we entrust our iCloud password to Samebox? Uh, I am concerned about the security implications of that. Great question. Uh, and uh, yes, yeah, so we, we can actually use uh, two-factor authentication and app-specific passwords. Uh, and especially, so iCloud has those. Um, and uh, yeah, quick kind of security point. Yes, th this is absolutely the number one question that most people have. Uh, email is kind of your most private uh, part of your life. Um, so we never look at the body of the emails. Um, our, our, our robots only look at the email headers. So we look at the timestamp, who it's from, uh, sometimes the subject, uh, but we really never look at the body. And so we that's why we even work with encrypted emails because uh, when you encrypt an email, you do not, you cannot encrypt the header. So we are as secure as humanly possible, um, and also as, as part of that, we never actually take possession of your email. Your emails always live on your mail server, and we just ask the server to move it from one folder to another. So if we were to get hacked, and we, we follow all of the latest security best practices, but uh, even if we were to get hacked, the bad guys just wouldn't find anything because we don't have anything. Um, Maya, your turn. Oh, are you on? I think you're on mute. Can I hear you? Ah, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at all the love. Yes, we did recently switch to, um, a new way of syncing all of our snippets, and it's much smoother. And it actually allowed us to uh, allow people to share snippet groups with other people. It's so much easier, so much easier. So you basically just send out an email invite, and then once someone accepts it, the group just shows up in their app, and then the updates happen automatically. Uh, between you two. Um, it was much more challenging before when we were using um, other people's sync services. Um, I had a great question. So somebody is using Outlook 
uh, with Office 365, and uh, Maurice, uh, and, and Maurice is wondering what advantages the sandbox provide, what's not available in Outlook, and, and there's a couple of other questions on, you know, how, what's the advantage of using sandbox versus uh, a bunch of filters? Um, it's so our, you know, Gmail also has prioritization filtering, and Outlook actually built um, a feature called Clutter. Um, so, funny story, when we launched in 2010, uh, we only supported Gmail, and we only did the one thing, which was move unimportant stuff out. So, two months later, Gmail launched Priority Inbox, which is kind of their first solution to this, and on that day, and we were still in beta, I think we had like 100 customers, uh, half of our beta users left. Um, so, we were, yeah, it, was a, it was a rough day. Um, most of them came back within the first couple of weeks. And today, uh, over half of our customers are on Gmail, and they prefer to pay us money for something that Gmail offers for free. Um, and actually, same is true for uh, Clutter. Uh, I was just talking to um, two IT managers at a, a large company, and what, what, what kind of what seems to be obvious with Clutter, which is also we know is true of, of Gmail, uh, those services um, use a kind of a global set of rules to figure out what's important to most people, right? And so. They're really not customizable. They don't really look at what you consider important, uh, unfortunately. And so that's kind of that's really the, the main thing we're seeing. And really, like the Gmail and um, the Clutter have been great for us because they kind of um, uh, it's kind of a, the, the gateway. <laughs> it's a gateway drug. Uh, it, it, people find out about the fact that you don't need all of this noise in your inbox, and then they get a little bit frustrated with the fact that it's it really doesn't work. It's not that accurate, and then they come to us uh, because yes, we are we are not free. We do cost money, but we are infinitely more accurate, infinitely more customizable. Um, Maya, <laughs> anything else? Uh, yeah, I think. Um, oh, uh, Jeff, Jeff um, had a great question. Will there be a discussion on how to effectively use both of these? Solutions together to streamline email processing. Uh, yeah, so that's actually uh, something uh, I think Thomas uh, hopefully addressed. Uh, but really, the, the kind of the combination of same reminders um, and also the, the folder called same no replies, which contains all of the emails um, that have not received a that you sent that did not receive a response, um, coupled with uh, some of the more more common snippets that you use for following up. Like we found that, you know, yeah, Thomas literally gets 90% response rate uh, with, you know, maybe two, one or two follow-ups, um, and it's yeah, super effective. Um, there was a couple of questions with uh, from folks in healthcare, um, so who have a, you know, a lot of security concerns. Um, so, you know, Sandbox is HIPAA compliant um, through a business associate agreement, and again, we, we're what, what's considered by HIPAA a pass-through entity. Like we don't have any of your uh, data, so we have a ton of doctors, ton of um, you know, uh, hospitals and healthcare institutions, and actually we have two of the largest law firms uh, who have an enterprise agreement with us, uh, and they, you know, we passed their security as well, and it was, uh, you know, it wasn't easy. Um, Kevin uh, says that his biannual sandbox renewal is coming up. Uh, and wants to reduce his cost. Uh, yeah, absolutely. First of all, Kevin, thank you for uh, for your loyalty. Um, we are, you know, we do have a referral credit, uh, but you know, please reach out. We'll uh, yeah, we'll be happy to work with you. Um, you know, ping, ping our support, or you can ping Thomas at Sandbox as well. Um, um, question from Oscar. I can't seem to be able to retrain emails that I once put into the same not spam folder. I moved them to other folders, but they keep going to that folder. How can I tell Sandbox to stop putting those emails in there? Great question. So same not spam folder is one of our a uh, little bit more, not the most popular feature, uh, or not the most commonly used feature. And what it is, is it basically it monitors your spam folder for false positives, for emails that are um, not spam. Right, and so another funny story. One of our customers is a venture capitalist who works with a lot of people at Google Ventures, uh, and Google specifically. Um, and routinely, emails and he uses G, or I think he uses Google Apps. And so routinely, emails from Google employees go to his spam folder on Google on his Gmail. Um, 
really bizarre. Uh, but uh, same not spam fishes them out of there and keeps them in that folder. So it's uh, if you if you currently scan your spam folder for you know stuff that's caught there by mistake, uh, same not spam will do it for you. So unfortunately, you cannot like, you cannot put emails into the same not spam folder. Um, it's not it's not it doesn't serve the purpose that Oscar I think you are trying uh, to use it for. Uh, if you want to put emails into spam folder, you should move it into spam. And not saying not spam. Let me let me know if that's not fair. Um, we have a question from BJ. Uh, I missed the hack with the new with the new subject line uh, to get a response. Can you enter it here? Is that oh yeah, it's just email buried. Ah. Email buried. Okay. Yes. Question mark. <laughs> um, do you really want to only wait two three days to follow up? No, it, it really depends. Uh, Autumn had a question. Yeah, it, it's it, it really depends on your flow. What's what's acceptable to you? Um, a meal. Uh, sorry, a um, a week, two weeks. It, it's up to you. Uh, and the beauty of this is you can customize both the same reminders and your uh, your uh, text expander snippets for for that specific use case. Um, yeah. All right. Um, so I've noticed a couple of questions about uh, whether text expander works inside of the Office Suite or inside of Evernote. And the answer is yes, Text Expander will expand in all the various apps on your Mac. And also, there's a question about the trial period. So I'm not actually sure which of us that question is directed at. But yes, Text Expander does offer a 30 day trial. Um, Dimitri, do you guys offer a trial? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we have a free trial for two weeks. And you know, if you need longer, just being our support. Um, um, yeah. That's a question for Thomas. Um, is there a generic tutorial for Sandbox? Absolutely. Um, if you can, uh, if you go to sandbox.com/intro, uh, it's a short video that about how Sandbox works. So I'll, I'll type it in here as well. Um, sandbox. Okay, uh, would you just turn off clutter if using Outlook, or would you run both? Um, a question from Lawrence. Uh, you can you can run both. Um, what we find is it's probably better to use one or the other, so they don't like there's no race condition. Um, they don't compete. Uh, and then one of the other questions was about uh, filters uh, earlier. Like, you can absolutely use a bunch of filters that you manually create. In fact, we've had a lot of customers who kind of come from that. From doing that, and they end up turning, you know, turning off all of their other filters and just going with Sandbox, and they find it is just, if not more, effective. Um, and, and essentially, yeah, you, you absolutely could do all of this manually. Um, you, know, you could set up multiple email accounts for for filtering different kinds of emails. You could use all kinds of different filters. Uh, you know, the the the, per the title of this webinar is how to crush email uh, using the you know these these tools and these hacks. Um, yeah, you can absolutely do everything kind of manually, but uh, you, you can do it more effectively with, uh, with our help. And yeah, um, if you were the cost, you know, this stuff pays for itself with the time you save. Oh, I'd like to thank Valerie, who actually reminded me to tell you guys about a couple of things. So uh, we actually have a whole series of video tutorials, so you can actually catch up on all of these specific features. I know I didn't go into too much detail on how you can have fill in fields and how to create like the uh, date snippets. So there are videos on all of that on our site, uh, textexpander.com. Um, Text Expander also, it will watch um, the things that you type the most that aren't snippets and it will actually send you suggestions for things that you could make into snippets to give you ideas on that. And if you have created a snippet, and you type it out in full, um, it will actually remind you that that's already a snippet, so that way next time you might remember and it'll save you some time. Um, on that, um, I actually created a snippet for Sandbox and actually for the text expander, so that whenever I type them, they will automatically correct with the right capitalization, because I know a lot of tech company names have interesting spacing and capitalization, so I have a whole group to correct things like that, so that's just 
another way I can use that. Okay. Um, another question from Dan. Um, can you create a custom folder like top to reads where you maybe want five specific newsletters to be sent automatically so that you don't have to sift through your send layer? Absolutely. That, that's a great, uh, great use case. We also have another kind of uh, preset folder called Sane News, which should only capture newsletters. But yeah, uh, this is where customization really comes in handy. Um, and what we you know, like to say is, if you have any email-related kind of workflow uh, problem, um, we'll we'll help you figure it out. So reach out to our support. We, we love solving these these kinds of uh, you know complicated use cases. Um, the only thing we cannot do uh, that's kind of available in the email universe is uh, delay the sending of the email. Uh, so if you want to, if you're sending an email at 2 a.m. and you don't want people to know that you're uh, an insomniac, uh, we do not have a solution to that. Uh, everything else uh, we can do. Um, a question about multiple email addresses. So yes, if you have multiple inboxes that you check, uh, you would need same box on each of those. What I personally do and what I highly recommend is uh, consolidating those inboxes. So that's a correct question from Rick, and I know it came up a couple times as well. Um, if you forward uh, multiple emails, essentially multiple in inboxes into one, you will only need same box on that one final inbox. And uh, pretty much well, Gmail and every email client allows you to set up aliases so that you can send, so you can automatically reply from the email that any email was sent to. Sorry, from the address an email was sent to. So you just hit reply, and it picks the right alias to reply from. Uh, you can also set up filters if you want to kind of create different views and kind of see emails sent to different addresses and context. You can do it with Gmail's filters, but uh, and nowadays it just doesn't make sense to have multiple inboxes to, to look at. Two is really kind of the limit. Um, yeah. Uh, the same box work with Apple Mail? Yes. Any any email client. <laughs> um, is it accurate to question from Mark? Is it accurate to say that snooze is for received mail and reminders is for send mail? Uh, you know, n yes and no. Um, it, it really depends. So the snoozing, the snooze folder, when you drag an email into tomorrow or next week or whatever, it's just a, it's a little bit more efficient. You can grab multiple emails and drag them there at once. Uh, what I really like doing myself is I just take an email and I forward it to tomorrow 9 a.m. at Sandbox. And that is the equivalent of snoozing it because it will come up at the top of my inbox uh, at the specified time. Uh, and that was a question from BJ earlier, uh, which I replied to uh, my text, but it's, it's worth addressing it. Um, if you if you if you drag an email into the tomorrow folder or any of the snooze folders, uh, we have a flag. You can specify if you want those emails to appear in the with the same uh, timestamp in your inbox as before, or with a new timestamp, um, you know, like in the morning. So it does it show up at the top of your inbox or wherever it was before. So that, that's up to you. It depends on your workflow. Uh, one of the things we found, it's um, th there are as many workflows as there are a number of people, and it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't work when you try to kind of enforce a certain workflow uh, on folks. Um, question between, uh, what's the difference between forwarding an email to two days at Sandbox versus CCing two days at, at Sandbox? So if you, if you, if the only recipient that, e that an email is sent to is a reminder address. So if you forward an email to two days at same box, it just shows up in, in your inbox in two days. If you CC, um, any, or if you send an email to someone else and you CC two days at same box, it will track whether you got a reply from that other recipient. Or if it's multiple recipients, it will be any of those other recipients. Um, now, th there's a, another a little hack. You can add the word keep. So you can send the email CC to keep dot two days at same box, then you will it will keep the reminder regardless of whether you get a response. So you'll get a reminder anyway. Um, question from Paul. Uh, Paul, I have to follow up with you on the uh, the same no replies uh, and exchange calendar invites thing. Uh, 
It's a great question. In fact, if you don't mind reaching out to our support team, um, just with that same question, I'll make sure we get back to you. Thank you. Um, um, Maya, anything else uh, from you? Yeah, Jeff, uh, thank you for, uh, yeah, Clutter is, oh yeah, another funny story with Clutter. Um, so, the th I think there were three engineers that worked on the product, and it took them three years to build it. All three of those engineers were our customers for like, those three years that they were building the, the, the product. It's pretty pretty funny. Uh, and it's basically, work it's like, it looks the same way, but it's just, it's not as accurate. Um, Question from uh, Hilliard. Uh, how many times do we need to take an action for Sandbox to learn? Um, one time. That's pretty immediate. Um, uh, is there a support page that addresses the how to use the reminder and follow up features of Sandbox? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you just go to our support portal and type uh, reminders, or actually just go to sandbox.com slash same reminders, it will walk through all the um, um, oh, sorry, question from Frank. Sorry, I missed your question, Frank. Does the Sandbox subscription work with multiple email accounts or is it per account? Um, so we have three plans. The first one works with one account, second plan works with two, and the, the last one, uh, the third one, works with up to four. Um, question from um, from um, uh, Robert, I have an affiliation with a nonprofit organization. Tell me about your enterprise plans. Um, happy to tell you more. We, we offer a discount to nonprofits. Uh, so if you think Thomas at sanebox.com, uh, we'll follow up with you. Um, it's, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm sure we'll make it work. Um, and can you connect with more than one? Go ahead. Uh, this is from Rick. So, how is Texas Standard different than? Um, Apple's built-in uh, shortcuts, so you can actually set up shortcuts on iOS and Mac that will expand as you type. So, uh, uh, Apple's version is sort of like an extremely, extremely simple pared-down version of Text Expander. So it only does plain text. It Last time I checked, it didn't even do carriage returns, so you couldn't actually, you know, have like a full email. So that's, um, I actually do use it. I use it for my, my email address. So I can have my email address expanding um, in uh, my iPhone anywhere. Um, so they are different. We do actually have, uh, on our blog, we've posted a script if you want to transfer all of your OS your Mac OS shortcuts into Text Expander. So I know uh, some people may have collected a large variety of those, so you can transfer those over. Um, a question from question from Deborah. Uh, I want Standbox to move the invoices sent to clients that are copied to my inbox. If I make a folder called Invoices, will Standbox be able to move them there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we also have. Uh, we have a data feature that we're, uh, we just rolled out called Same Forward, uh, which I think addresses this question and another question um, earlier. Um, yeah, you can create a folder that automatically forwards certain kinds of emails to different services. Uh, so you can um, forward, like, if you have some kind of a cloud service that does anything with those invoices, like, for instance, we uh, expensify it. I realize it's not exactly the same thing, but um, you can automatically forward receipts to Expensify. You can autom automatically forward invoices to uh, another your, your invoice app, uh, and if it can if it can parse the email for you know, for attachments or something else, it, it will work out happily. Um, and a question from Hillary: um, Can one account work with all of my devices, two Macs, an iPhone, and an iPad? Absolutely. We don't not only don't care, we don't know how many devices you use, um, so you can. You can have a hundred devices um, and Sandbox will, and one, as long as it's connected to one email account, uh, Sandbox will work on all of those uh, automatically and we wouldn't be able to tell you that. So Randy asks um, how you keep track of your snippets. So inside the TextExpander app, 
um, you actually put your snippets into groups. So, you know, I have all of the URLs that I have short snippets for are in one group, and then all of my personal, like, typing autocorrections are in another group, and all of my emails that are, like, responding to press requests are in another group. And so you can actually look in the app and sort of see what groups you have, and then, um, again, I highly recommend that you set up the search hotkey because that is just the fastest way to get access, access to your snippets. Um, and a question from Robert. Um, have you passed Apple's software approval process? Um, I'm not sure if that's a question for, uh, for you, Maya, or for us. Uh, I'll, I'll take that. Uh, we're not an Apple app. Uh, we, we are friends with Apple and, uh, you know, with Apple's uh, App Store. Um, but we never had to pass any kind of approval process because we are not a, an app that can be installed. Um, our Mac app is not in the App Store. Um, the iOS app is, well, has to be in the App Store. And um, uh, you just uh, sign in with your TextFender account to get in there, so uh, there aren't any conflicts with the Apple Store. Um, and then one, one question from Todd. Um, what is the difference between between CC and BCC for saying reminders? Great question. Um, the hack that we use is if you want people to know that you're watching them, CC. Uh, if, you do, if you want it to be a secret, BCC. That's, that's basically it. But they're, functionally, there's no difference. Uh, we're actually considering um, uh, kind of building a feature that would, would treat those differently, but we haven't decided if it's a good idea yet. Um, I think that might be, okay, well, just a couple more. Um, do I have to purchase a license for each email address I own? Question from Art. Um, yes. Uh, again, I would recommend forwarding them into the one, like, I have all of my aliases forwarded into my Gmail account, so I need one Sandbox account just once. Um, oh, and by the way, yeah, the other thing is um, we also send you a reminder, uh, sorry, not a reminder, a digest of all the emails that we need out of your inbox. Um, once once a day, you can customize it to be more often or less often. Um, if you um, if you have multiple email accounts, and multiple same box accounts, or multiple same box same boxes for each of those accounts, we will send you multiple digests. So I personally really recommend consolidating all of your inboxes. It will make your life better. Just same box aside, it will make your life better. Um, and so for the text expander side of accounts, you personally only need one text expander account and it will allow you access to all of the apps. Um, if you're a team, then you each individual would have their own text expander account, but then you can actually gather them together under the umbrella of an organization and that actually has some features to allow you to more easily and quickly share snippets between you guys. Um, you can actually see statistics, so you can actually see how much time your whole team together is saving, which snippets are you using most, which can be super handy in figuring out like major customer complaints because that's what your support team is responding with. They're responding with that snippet most. Um, and the for the Windows version of Text Expander, um, it is currently in beta, but it will eventually have. Um, the functionality of the Mac app. Mm -hmm. All right, All right folks, we're, we're actually coming up to our allotted hour and a half, which we did not think we would need. So thank you so much for excellent questions. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, thank you. It's always more interesting when people ask questions. Otherwise, you just have to listen to, like, the normal boring stuff we say. Exactly. Not that it's boring, sorry. Yeah, you know, I almost wish there were more difficult questions. <laughs> Next time. Folks, um, thank you very much. Uh, if you have any other questions, so yeah, we'll follow up um, with everything we, we said we would follow up with. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, ping thomas at uh, sandbox.com or dimitri at sandbox.com um, or support at sandbox.com, and we will... Um, Pull up with you really quick. Like one, yeah, one of the things we realized is that 
anytime anything goes wrong with people's email, uh, they blame us because they're like, we're, we're, you know, we're the first, <laughs> first line of defense. Uh, and so we've gotten really good at solving people's email problems, like whether or not they deal with sandbox. Um, so if you have any email related issues, don't hesitate to reach out. Whether it's sandbox or not, we'll, we know how to fix them. Uh, yeah, so, and thank you all for having your awesome questions and sticking around to view the whole video. Um, you can reach me at maya at smilesoftware.com. And if you have any questions for our support team, we actually have a whole support team ready to answer your questions seven days a week. And they are at support at textexpander.com. Excellent. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Good day.